So for those of you who aren't privileged to live in a quaint little village with beautiful history uh, like this, uh, I'll show you where my apartment is and I'll show you what is my garden. And um, these places, I've always been attracted to them. I love the architecture. I'm fascinated by, um, you know, spirituality and religion and all the other connotations of control and governance and all that. Um, these buildings um, are, are powerful and, um, you know, incredible architecture. And when we look at some of these headstones, they are so intricate. And of course, they are all the big wigs from this village. Uh, and, you know, we can tell who the big wigs were. And we can see that, you know, there's a whole row of them. And most of these are like from at least one or maybe two families. Um, and we can see um, businesses around the city which, um, you know, were created by these. Now, if we look here, we can see uh, John Bilson Everard. Um, we have a brewery called the Everard's Brewery. And uh, that's very likely um, uh, one of the founders or, you know, a member of the founding uh, family. And then we've got another one, which is Geary, which is um, a baker's. Um, and when we look at, um, you know, how beautiful these were. Works of art, people. This is solid slate. So we see here that we've got John Bilston, and then we've got John Bilston, beloved wife of John Bilston. Um, over here we've got John Jackson Bilston, son of John and uh, Sophia Bilston. So we, we have whole families uh, which had these incredible, um, very expensive um, tombstones carved in their memory. George Bass Bilston. 1839, 45 years old. You know, when we look um, at the ages that many people died, 45 would have deemed to be quite old. You know, you'd see a balding man with a paunch and uh, all that sort of thing. Um, and they wouldn't have been expected expecting to, to, to live much longer than that. Now, here is a, a doorway which goes into um, the, the house which is next door to mine. And you can see that that must have previously been the rectory. Look at that incredible building. And my apartment is just there. And so my apartment looks over his garden. And when we look around and we consider the history, it's, it's a fascinating thing, it's a wonderful thing. And to see how times have changed and if ever I was of a mind to seek out the history around here, I'd go back to see when the first buildings were built in this tiny little village um, and who by and, um, you know, who uh, provided the funds for the local vicarage or the church or the memorial centres or the roads or all those sorts of things. You know, local business people put into creating their own villages. 
that's how it happened in the old days. They weren't reliant on uh, local councils because invariably there wasn't any money. And so this is kind of like my secret garden. And over here, this is another doorway which goes down into my garden. Ah. So that little archway there, there would have been steps going down here um, into uh, another older building, which now uh, is modern. And uh, that one directly through there is mine. And so, of course, there is constant church bell chiming, uh, which is, you know, kind of quaint. And um, they chime out every 15 minutes. And so we know when it's quarter past, half past, quarter two, and then on the hour. Some people could deem that to be annoying, but there's you know, a great difference between church bells and traffic, tooting and horns and all that sort of thing. So I bring my deck chair or my towel in the summertime and I lay down there and very, very rarely does anybody venture into here. And this is where I am. And then again, I read my book and I just walk around, getting all over town, drinking a bottle of beer, eating a packet of crinkled cup chips. Wow. And sometimes, these days, I will be visited via Providence or some of the other locals because they're all around this region and so I'll put a few knots in my pocket and if I see some then I'll throw them to them the other graveyard is just over there and so just next to each other how calming and this energy here it is pretty pure energy, it feels pure. You know, these churches, they were always built on ley lines, where two ley lines cross over, always built on um, earth energy portals. And if we go back through the history, we will discover that there are pagan settlements of worship here, then there are Saxon settlements, and then ultimately they're the Christian settlement of worship. Always empty. I think they have tea and biscuits on a Sunday morning and they pull a few ropes on the bells and then the place just sits there, dormant, a vestige of a semblance of what it used to be. There's our gorgeous cherry tree, right in the background there. Of uh, course, there are viewers from all over the world and in the old days when I used to have like 15, 20,000 uh, subscribers, I had people viewing me from the most obscure countries that you would never imagine, like Kazakhstan. And you think, wow, that's bizarre. The sort of places that they live and the culture that they grew up within 
and they're watching my videos. But spirit, you see, knows no culture, no boundaries. And whenever people get the call in, then, you know, they're attracted to um, whoever is shining the light. But yes, many of you, uh, you live in, in cities and, um, I don't know, far flung places, uh, out in the, um, the, 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 the plains of um, some um, American state, which is as flat as a pancake. Uh, I don't know, Ohio, is that like flat? And, you know, some parts of Texas just go on for miles and miles and miles. You just got fields of crops. You don't ever see any old buildings like this. So it's the energy, it's the environment. And that's what I get from Britain. That's what you get from these ancient places in Europe. 